Welcome back to the show. Of course, everyone in Vancouver knows that the Vancouver Playhouse International Wine Festival kicks off this week and uh, this year celebrating Spain. And we have a man who is at the forefront of the Spanish wine industry joining us now. Absolutely. Telmo Rodriguez is joining us, winemaker from Telmo Rodriguez Wines. How are you? Hi, Telmo. How are you? So tell us about where you're from and your wines. Well, um, you know, Spain is a historic country, you know, and, and uh, you know, we've been making wines for more than 2,000 years, so. Yeah. <laughs> little bit yeah. of history. Are, there's some history, so, there's some depth So we there. are, we are the, all, the old world. And I think it's, it's very exciting now because we are like rediscovering. Yeah. It's like, uh, for me, Spain is like, uh, you know, imagine a very old house with, with beautiful things inside that has been like closed for yeah. 100 years and now we are like rediscovering. Well, right. and Tomo, I mean, really what you've done is, is you've taken the, the, uh, the varietals that traditionally grew in Spain and you're really sort of, uh, at the forefront of rediscovering them, I guess, uh, aren't you? How much of a fight has this been for you in your career? It throws me like a fight. In fact, um, you know, when I, I've been trained in France, that I think is a, a very important country for us. And when I came back to Spain, I thought that it was a, it was a pity to try to plant international grapes. Right, in so the country. Cabernets and the... Absolutely, it's quite boring now. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so at the end, you know, we started in Spain, we have fantastic grapes. Uh, from uh, Tempranillo, Garnacho, Mencia. And I think, you know, uh, it's very important for wine lovers to discover those grapes that have been there for a thousand years. Yeah. So it's, uh, for me, it's, it's true that it's been like a fight to try to recuperate and fight. to revindicate. Yeah. How were you fight. finding the old, uh, the old vineyards? I mean, would you just go, would they be in disrepair or would the winemakers be ripping them up or what would be happening with you the know, old vineyards? You um, know, well, I'm becoming old now, but you know, when I started in wine uh, a few years ago, um, you know, for me, Spain has been like, um, uh, we moved in the last 40 years from the Middle Age to the Modern Age. So <laughs> in the last, no, it's true, in the last 30, 40 years in Spain happened more things than in the last yeah. 500. Yeah. So for me, you know, uh, I, I saw, you know, living maybe the, 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 the horses, they left the, the, the vineyards <laughs> and the tribal came. And now it's very funny because the, the mules and the horses, they are coming back to the vineyards. So it's extremely exciting. And, uh, and, and, uh, and let's talk about some of the wines that you brought yeah. with you today. Tell us about this one here. Well, the first one, the Lanzaga, is a, for me, it's a very, very important project. You know, it's really I've been in the last 20 years, right, rediscovering um, unknown areas from Spain. And, you know, I'm, as I am a little bit provocative, when a journey asked me, well, which is the next place to rediscover? And I think Rioja, you know, Rioja is very well known. It's like yeah. this, the Spanish Bordeaux. I think we should rediscover Rioja. And, uh, and my challenge was to go to a little village in Rioja called Lanciego yeah. and to try to produce a, a village wine and uh, to re recuperate bush vines is the next my next fight is <laughs> to recuperate bush vines you know we I don't work with any trellis you know with those modern yeah kind so of how vineyards. long did it take you to find something that you're happy with when it comes to something like this well you know I think this this is more or less my my work is the intuition to find a place that you can smell that it can produce a good wine you know at the end yeah. this is the for me this is much more important than wine making I said always that the wine they are and the good grape they are yeah. They, they, they are made in, they, tra they are transforming wine alone. You know, we, we don't need a winemaker to produce a great wine, yeah. but we need to find this fantastic place. That is more or less what I'm doing. Right. I think this is extremely so important. Probably a very small batch as well, very small uh, run in, in terms of bottles when it comes to, to well, a wine. Well, you know, like those, it's true that those miracles are, are small, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> but those are the fantastic wines. Right? Yeah. The, the, it's like the, the nice restaurant. They are normally small and they are. <laughs> right. Well, let's, uh, can we give it Should a shot? Should we try this one? And, uh, or course, talk so. about the next one? Or? Let's, well, let's talk about them first and yeah. tell them if we have time. Tell us about this one here. You know, here there are three wines that, uh, you know, those so Rioja, as I said, but very boutique, very small, uh, and, uh, and uh, very, you know, um, uh, focused in a single place, yeah. a small place. This, you know, this is Toro, and Toro region is true that in the last few years we said that ah, this is the new El Dorado from Spain because it's very, very interesting. For example, it's a vineyard completely ungrafted. You know, all the, the European vineyard was destroyed by Phylloxera, and yeah. uh, you can find one place in Spain that is Toro, that the vines, they are not grafted, so they are planted directly. And for me, as a producer, it was very interesting and very exciting to, yeah. 
to produce a wine in a place that you had those very pure original vines. Uh, how old would the vines be? I mean, some of them they'd no, be. No, they, they can be 80 or 90 or 70, but the <laughs> thing is that we, we still replant without American roots, so it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's quite exciting. I yeah. think it's a new place to show uh, to the consumer, that's very exciting. And then we finish with the white wine, the Bassa. I think the Bassa, you know, Spain is not well known as a white wine country. We always yeah. think of red wine. Yes, yeah. but this is another mistake. I think in Spain we have some fantastic white grapes. You know, in a world dominated by uh, Chardonnay and Sauvignon, in Spain you have Verdejo, Godello, Treixadura, Garnacha. It's amazing. I think it's, yeah. it's the moment I to rediscover those. And this one yeah. here is a blend? Is that what it is? But the main grape is Verdejo. Okay. Verdejo is, uh, is the main grape from Rueda. I think it's, for me, it's one of the most, uh, the best relationship between quality and pride that you can find in Spain. And yeah. it's very, very unique. And uh, well, it's, it's a good way to understand the Spanish white. Well, and I can see how much the art of wine uh, matters to you a as a person and as a professional in this business. It's not about the production necessarily. It's about what's behind that and the soul of it. Well, but, but you are right. I think that, you know, uh, you know, our work is, you know, you know, the ancestors are very important. And mm -hmm. at the end, my work has been to, to try to respect what the, our grand-grandfathers did in yeah. those places. I think this is, uh, and uh, well, I don't, think, I don't think we are artists, the wine producers, but I yeah. think the winemakers, but I think we are. Can I open this? Of course, of course. I would love to, because this is something a little bit unusual. <laughs> Why not? Now, we have a, a picture. Of course, you're talking about the history and stuff and, and respecting uh, what it is that you do in Spain, but Thank you're you. building new things, too. But it shows that you still have that same respect when it comes to building this things. Tell us about this building, building here. Right, of course, you know, it's, uh, it's not at all about, uh, you know, doing a pastiche. And I think that I am... Uh, when you know, uh, when you are 30, 40 years old, you try to do things that they are contemporary. This is a wine, my winery in Rioja. I think we did a, a very interesting work, not pretentious in the sense that you know in Spain now all the top architects are, are right. creating amazing wineries. You know, always my, always I, I say that the beauty is in the vineyard. But it's true that well, I'm, I'm proud to have a nice winery that because I live inside and we work inside. Right. <laughs> it's gonna and look I think, nice. I think it's good. I think it's good, and uh, and it's true that we have been. Uh, for example, yeah. we have done an amazing job by doing our buildings in uh, in earth, yeah. not using concrete, and that building that you, you are showing uh, is a skin made with our cask. You're kidding. So That's once amazing. you finish with the casks, you're, you're it's like using when a bull, you know, is a very good bull. You don't kill him, you know, in the, <laughs> in the bull fighting. We, we you decide, send him out to be used again. We decide our worst casks that are going to be part of our building, and we're going to live. With those it's got a beautiful look to it, too, it's, it's, and uh, gives it its own history. Well, oh, cheers great. to you. This is lovely. And cheers it's to everybody at the different. Wine Festival. Of course, the Vancouver Playhouse International Wine Ooh. Festival is on until April the 3rd. There are tons of events to go to. You can go to the website to find out all the information to make sure that you can try some great wines. Thank you These again. are all available locally as well, so nice and easy to find. And uh, having tasted it, that is amazing. Thank you very much. Tough day at the office. Tough day at the office. We're going to take a break, and when we return.